how is everyone? Hi. Let me, let me do this with my little camera here. Okay. I think that's better. Hi. How are you? Happy Thursday. It is me again. I get to come to you live um, every single week and spread hope and inspiration and empower you all to be the best versions of yourself on every level, mentally, emotionally, physically, nutritionally. And as with every third Thursday of the month, I think it's the third Thursday of the month. Anyway, it's my it's time for a story of hope, which I know you guys freaking love. I do too. Um, I want to pull up the chart notes for this client so I can go through it with you in details. Um, what I will start off by saying is she's 46 and she will be giving birth right around her 47th birthday natural pregnancy after unsuccessful, I hate the word failed, but unsuccessful fertility treatments, including a transfer from eggs that she created in her 20s. Uh, so she had some frozen eggs. They only got like a couple embryos out of it and they transferred and um, turned into a blighted ovum. Uh, just pull up her chart. I had to remember her name, but I will not tell you her name. And of course, um, you know, everything here, I, I tweak things so that people maybe can't totally identify themselves in it. Um, but I really, really, really give you the full picture. So I want to go all the way back. So um she started coaching with myself and my team um, right around, let's see, May of 2021. At the time, she was just about to turn, um, so we're in 2022, she was just about to turn 45. Um, she was being turned down by fertility clinics because they did not believe in her ability to get and stay pregnant at her age. Um, one of her doctors said they don't accept anybody over the age of 30, 43. Um, she then went to see Dr. Luke in New York City. Um, and she has had two miscarriages. Um, and she was thinking about donor eggs. Um, but mind you, her last pregnancy was in 2018. So it had been over two years that she'd been trying and hadn't gotten pregnant. One pregnancy was from a frozen embryo transfer that were embryos that she created or eggs that she created when she was in her 20s. And that was a blighted ovum. And then she had one natural pregnancy in 2018. So I have a case summary too from when. So she did freeze her eggs in her 20s. She had 15 um, fertilized and only got four embryos, used two of them, no pregnancy, still has two left, they're not tested. She had tried to conceive for two years. Um, she has two miscarriages, like I said, a blighted ovum after a frozen embryo transfer in 2019, a natural pregnancy in 2018, miscarriage at five weeks, no DNC, so we don't have any, the plan was to do more retrievals, but cost was um, an issue. And she had done two retrievals at the age of 45. She got six and five, um, eggs but only two blasts from both a total two blasts and neither were normal so i had recommended um lower dose meds for the next rounds working with a mini ivf clinic she was she has read yet yes you can get pregnant she's read body belief egg quality diet hadn't yet come out she's coaching with um one of my coaches online sarah she'd been diagnosed with adenomyosis hashimoto's uh, her AMH was a 0.5. Her FSH was between a 10 and a 15. She had ANA positives, cardiolipin, but it wasn't high enough to impact pregnancy. I recommended considering baby aspirins for any future pregnancies. She's had two surgeries, a laparoscopic and an open abdo abdomen myomectomy. Um, consider endometrial biopsy as well as another thing I had recommended. Um, some of her fears and limiting beliefs were things you guys can totally resonate with. I'm too old. Docs are doing a pity party. Should I do donor eggs? I don't want to do too much and get stressed. Cleaning up the things, doing the things to support herself. She has anger around not freezing eggs sooner. She's pissed off at the RE about transferring when she had fibroids. Annoyed with herself about not asking or knowing enough in the past. She was worried about money. Um, 
best case scenario was to have her own babies with her own genes, but she had fear around not being able to do that because of her age. So you guys can all, you know, um, relate to that. Um, she wanted to freeze eggs at 34 again, and the doctor was super dismissive. So she had a lot of anger about the past. Um, and she was going back and forth, like donor, natural, my own egg. Should I do another retrieval or not? Um, so she started the body belief diet. Um, this was, did I say she started working with us in, in May? That's a lie. Um, <laughs> uh, she started working with us in April of 2021 and she was doing the body belief diet and she was feeling awesome. Um, we put her on some supplements. Let me go all the way back. I thought I was. So 45, going to be 46 in June. Um, froze eggs at 39, 40, and then had some, like I said, when she was younger as well. Um, and two pregnancies, right? We went over that. So, um, we sent her, we wanted a second opinion from a hematologist because of some of the things that were going on. Um, we recommended if she were to get pregnant naturally to add in a baby aspirin because of, she has some of the ANA, like I said, the Hashimoto's adenomyosis. She's got a lot of signs of inflammation and or autoimmunity. Um, uh, I recommended an endometrial biopsy as well. Um, and then some of her red flag symptoms, which I want to get to, they're all the way back here. Um, her vitamin D was good. Her TSH was in good range too, just so you know. I always check those things. Um, and her AMH was, I thought, pretty good considering her age, a 0.5. FSH, pretty good. Um, cardiolipin was a little high. She, um has thyroid antibodies and an ANA. So obviously then we were concerned about autoimmunity. Um, her cycles were pretty normal, 27 to 28 days, three days of bleeding, day one is full bleeding, everything else was pretty light. She was very concerned about that, thought that that would um, render her infertile. Um, she has some neck and shoulder pain, seasonal allergies, lots of phlegm, sinuses in the throat. Um, rashes on her skin. Her sleep was not always restful. She had sleep issues, waking up at 4 a.m., um, heavy snoring, tight jaw, hair loss. Constipation was a big one for her. Um, would go almost daily, but her stool was in small pebbles and hard. She would skip one to two days. Um, she felt bloat. She felt gassy. She had belches. She had acid reflux. Um, she was eating at the time a shake. This was her current diet before she came to us. Frozen blueberries, frozen kale, which you guys know how I feel about the frozen stuff. Turmeric, flaxseed, chia seed, ginger, eggs, avocado on toast. Um, that was not organic toast and it was not gluten-free. Mind you, she had Hashimoto. So gluten, dairy, and soy need to be treated like an allergy when you have Hashis. She would have Kashi cereal, honey bunches of oat cereal with banana, um, oatmeal. She would do pork and uh, and frozen dumplings that she would buy and heat up, rice noodles, wonton dumplings, leftovers, egg noodles, eggs, avocado toast, salad, anchovies, dinner, lamb beef stew, grass-fed ground beef with uh, nightshade vegetables, which can be another trigger when we're dealing with autoimmunity or inflammation, shredded organic chicken, organic chicken broth, steak, quinoa. So she had like what would be considered a pretty decent diet. Um, she does not exercise. She uh, had a significant amount of, of emotional trauma in her life. Um, she was taking melatonin gummies, uh, NAC, not enough, um, or a decent amount, CoQ10, MitoQ, and D3 gummies. Um, and then she was adding in a prenatal. Um, they were from uh, not a good brand, like a, the, the Costco brands. She was taking folic acid, not methylfolate. No one had corrected that. Um, and then um, we recommended right then and there to do the body belief diet. 
start reading body belief, emails, questions, start some kind of exercise to help get bowels moving, keeping fish oil in the fridge or freezer to reduce boop, burping, um, use neti pot for allergies, sinuses, um, review supplements, get a TSH tested again during pregnancy, thyroid antibodies were positive, explain autoimmunity a little more, emotional connection, start with body belief, and then we go from there, next appointment in two to three weeks. So that's where we started back in April. Um, and like I said, she was working with my coach, um, Sarah. And so we put her, we changed up her supplements quite a bit. Um, and you know, just to ones that I recommend, you guys can go to my website under Amy's recommended supplements and see that. Um, but we recommended obviously the diet plan, adding in bone broth, um, talked about autoimmunity. We changed the prenatal. Um, we recommended a different kind of fish oil and increasing the fish oil, um, a methylated folate, probiotic, um, maca, myo-inositol, uh, digestive enzymes um, based on the adenomyosis and things like that in the, in the past. The N-acetylcysteine we kept. Um, we had her stop. She was taking some random herbs, which as an herbalist, I'm firmly against and, and so was my team. And so we had her stop those. CoQ10, we switched the the uh, supplement brand. Vitamin D, we switched the brand. Melatonin, she was taking a lot of melatonin. So we went down, she was taking 10 milligrams of melatonin a day, which is way too much. You don't need that much. We went down to one to two and really tuned in on how she was feeling. And we took some supplements away. We added in liver, collagen peptides. Um, okay, so that was the general protocol. And we started that, like we said, um, at the age of, she's 45, April of last year. Um, and then at one point she, then in June she decided to do group coaching with um, myself and one of my other coaches who is no longer on the team, Michelle. Um, but she actually didn't coach with Michelle. She would do her private sessions with Sarah still. So she stayed with Sarah, who's still on my team. And, um, and myself for the group coaching. And so, like I said, her red flag symptoms, so this is um, a year ago, insomnia, constipation, acid reflux, dry mouth, sinus congestion, heavy snoring, pain, hair loss, she had a lot of them, like a lot. I'm not gonna read through them, all of them. Um, we adjusted her supplements as we, as we said already. And we went back and forth, um, the diet, we put her on the egg quality diet. So at this point, egg quality diet's now coming out June. She started working with me in June and egg quality diet came out in June. So she went there, she started doing egg quality diet. We wanted her to do castor oil packs, acupuncture, mind abdominal massage, work on the mindset piece. Um, we want to begin to let yourself dream is something I said to her, to allow yourself to be more at ease and free. Meditation and tapping or EFT can really help you here. Journaling, take some time to write out a vision of how your life could be if all your dreams came true. Um, went over some of her lab testing. Um, next steps, as we discussed on the last group call, I'd love for you to entertain coming back, right, for another retrieval to New York City. Um, the diet is going to be key for you, so keep up all the amazing work you were doing there. So that was in June of 2021 and um, okay so then she finds out oh yeah it's June of this year right why am I getting so confused so it was April of 2021 right June of 2021 so then she finds out um, that, so mind you, she started working with us in April. She's changing her diet. She's doing all the things. We're three months into a whole protocol. She's doing the group coaching um, and really nailing it on all of the things we've changed up. So she's about three or four months into the whole protocol and she finds out she's pregnant. Um, wow, exciting and hopeful news. I will let Amy know, but of course we won't share this info with anyone else. So this is, you know, quite a while ago. Um, we're encouraging her to get things tested. Now, mind you, she's at this point, 46 years old. She just turned 46. 
So she's about two months into her 46th year. Um, she was traveling, so it was complicated. We got blood work. Um, she didn't want to be a story of hope until she was well past, um, like anybody. Um, we checked her TSH, um, her beta was rising, her progesterone looked beautiful. She wanted to know about diet, should she change anything? We said, absolutely not, you should not. Um, and then she was getting, she got an ultrasound. Everything was looking great still. Her TSH still looked great. Um, and um, her HCG was looking great. We went back over vitamins. Um, we kept her on the baby, the baby and me prenatal. She was on magnesium. She was on um, a probiotic. She was on liver still, uh, E3 live, vitamin D and cod liver oil, two teaspoons a day of cod liver oil. And all of that, um, okay. And she was super anxious and scared. So of course, um, she, then we hear seven week ultrasound. Um, her, her bowels were totally normal at that point too, right? A lot of her red flag symptoms have gone away. Um, and let's see, she had um, all of these additional tests because of her age. And let's see, as of, um, yeah, so she's still early on her pregnancy. So I want to read to you guys what's recent. So she continues her prenatal, her fish oil, magnesium liver, and two baby aspirin a day. Um, and at this point, she is, yeah, so she's 30 weeks pregnant now. So 26 weeks pregnant, not, um, nuchal looked good, anatomy scan was good. Um, she's eating as healthy as she, the whole time. Um, and yeah, so she's already thinking about baby number two because she still has those two frozen embryos on ice. Um, uh, and she's continuing her coaching with my team because she feels so lovely and supported. So we just went over nutrition again for her, bone broth, eggs, warm, slow cooked foods, lots of cooked greens, black sesame rice. Um, Supplements, again, we went over. She just wanted to be as careful as possible. She was a little iron deficient, so we added in some Flora Vitals. Um, and we also have a formula that we're preparing for her right after she delivers the baby because she's already thinking about all of these things. So, um, yeah, 30 weeks pregnant at 46. She will be um, 47 in the next couple months. Um and so there you have it. So let's see, do we have any, any questions in here? Um, I think it's a great case because especially how she was getting the PGS normals and trying to conceive for two years with no success and even transferring younger embryos or younger eggs that became embryos and it not working and then to go and get naturally pregnant right around 46, um, just a beautiful story. Um, and so yeah, we're, um, we're loving it. We're so, we're cheering for her, cheering her on. Um, and someone said, I would love to coach with you. I'm on your wait list. I probably will open some new slots come January. Absolutely. She did conceive naturally. Yes, that was the thing. So she had been working with us um, since early 2021. And in the summer of 2021, she conceived naturally. And we, we just changed up a lot of things, really addressed the inflammation and autoimmunity in her body, put her on a very clean diet um, and there you have it. And it's just also interesting too, because prior she wasn't supplementing properly. She was getting folic acid, not methylfolate. I think that's a big one, but not taking like fish oils or, you know, and not good supplementation. And during that time had done, um, retrievals and transfers and nothing was successful. And so then make these tweaks and it's a fast turnaround. I'm not going to lie for, especially for a woman in her mid forties, but it happened and it's happening. And um, right now in my practice, I have two women this same age that are very pregnant, natural pregnancies, both of them, both having had previous unsuccessful IVF, even the other one that I haven't done her case yet, um, she had a PGS normal and we made a PGS normal, maybe she was like 45 and it didn't take when we transferred it and then got pregnant naturally, kind of after giving up 
she was like 46 and a half. So she's turning, she's going to be 47 as well when she gives birth. Um, have very low AMH, PCOS just turned 40. Would your protocol help with this at all? Uh, it, it's not going to hurt. Um, yeah, I would, I would start with the egg quality diet. I think that's the place to start. I also have a fertility starter kit that might be a good place for a lot of you guys to start, especially if you're brand new to me. If you go to amyralph.com slash fertility starter kit. Do I recommend fish, fish oils in all cases? I do. 100%. Fish oil is a powerful anti-inflammatory. I talk about some research in egg quality diet that women who have a better omega-3 to 6 ratio have a quad, uh, I think three-time pregnancy outcome. So you want more of those omega-3s in there. Um, why take an aspirin a day? So only in this case, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Typically women in their 40s, um, I will recommend a baby aspirin because it helps thin the blood and helps with implantation. You do not take it all cycle long though. You would just take it in the luteal phase. Of course, you should discuss it with your doctor or your healthcare provider, but it basically helps thin the blood and can help prevent clotting that could cause the embryo to miscarry or stop growing. Do you see women with silent endo? Yes, I do. I treat a lot of endometriosis. Um, that's really kind of where I started digging deep on the diet and autoimmunity and inflammatory uh, diseases. So fish oil per day, you know, depends again on the case, but I say at least two grams or 2000 milligrams a day. Some people need more. Um, what would you say are the worst foods for endo? Uh, follow the egg quality diet is what I would say. Um, Cause the, you don't know everybody's body responds differently to different things. Um, and so the egg quality diet is set up to be an elimination diet so you can learn the exact right fertility diet for you. But the obvious, the obvious offenders are gluten, dairy, soy, sugar. Um, but then the less obvious things can be grains, nightshades, lectins. So there's a lot of foods that could be impacting endometriosis. You only know when you do, I would do the egg quality diet personally. Um, that's why I made it guys. And let's see, um, okay, needed to hear this today. I started my journey at 40, I'm 46, I just found you, Oh, but I have hope, okay, good. Um, okay, I already answered the, the aspirin, I have hope as well, okay. Yeah, so guys, check out my books, check out my fertility starter kit, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna see you guys next week, but let's all send baby dust to each and every one of us on here. And also lots of love and light to this woman who is 30 weeks pregnant at the age of 46 and a half. Natural pregnancy, her own eggs. Amazing, you can do it. Love you guys, I'll see you later, ciao.